نحمده ونسلي ونسلم على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم رسوله النبي الأمين المكين الحنين الكريم الرؤوف الرحيم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبه إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم سل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلي وفاطمة وحسن وحسين وآله وأصحابه بعدد كل مخلوقاتك أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم تنزيله بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس أهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Most respected مشايخ علماء الكرام My respected Sahib Sajjada The Mutawalli of this Astana And the respective Sajjada Gan Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah with the grace of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And with the benedictions of the Holy Prophet Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam We have gathered here for this Eid Miladun Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and the A'ras of Huzur Baba Farid al-Din Mas'ud al-Shakar Ganj rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi as well as the Urs of Sahib Astana Hazrat Sayyid Shah Ghulam Rasul Ahmad Qaddas Allah ta'ala sirrahu al-Aziz May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite mercy accept our presence here this afternoon and may he accept whatever we do sincerely for his sake insha'Allah ta'ala There's a hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam which has been narrated in various books of a hadith. But the wording that I'm giving to you is from the Mustadrak of Imam Hakim. And it is narrated We'll just wait for Hazrat Shah Ghulam Muhammad Sufi to come in. Naray Takbir Naray Risalat قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبه إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما تحب وترضى بأن تصلي عليه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم As I mentioned the hadith that I'm narrating to you is in various books of hadith but I'm narrating the words of Imam Hakim from his Musadrak and he states خط رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم في الأرض أربعة خطوط. meaning the prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم drew on the ground he drew four lines. he used his asa mubarak and he drew four lines on the sand. and the holy prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم asked قال أتدرون ما هذا؟ do you all know what this is؟ so all the Sahaba Kiram Ridwan Allah Majma'in said Ibn Abbas narrates it. He said, Fakalu, Allahu wa Rasulu Alam. Allah and his Rasul know best. Because it's just four lines on the on the ground. Huzur Anwar alayhi salatu sam then stated, Fakala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. These four lines, what do they represent? He said, Afbalu nisa'i ahlil jannah. These four lines represent the most honored and the most noble of the women of paradise. 
The four lines represent them. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam went on to elaborate who are the most highest and the most honored and the most noble of the women of Jannah. Which four are they? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam stated, Khadija. Allahu Akbar. Khadija. And then he said, Wa Fatima bintu Muhammadin. Right? And then the Prophet stated, Fatima to binti Muhammadin wa Asiya bintu Muzahim. And then Rasulullah said, Imra to Fir'aun. And then he said, Wa Maryamu binti Imran. He said, And Maryam, the daughter of Imran. So Rasulullah outlined who are the four most noble women of Jannah. And he said, Khadija binti Khuwailid binti Asad. And then he said, Fatima bintu Muhammadin. And then he said, Asiya bintu Mazahim, the wife of Fir'aun. And the fourth one, Maryam bintu Imran, bi Sayyida Maryam, the daughter of Imran. Who is Khadija? Who is Khadija al-Kubra? She is from Ummahatul Mu'mineen. She is the mother of the believers. And who, who did he take second? Fatima bintu Muhammadin. Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad. What's the rabata? Mother and daughter. Then Rasulullah said the third of the most noble woman of Jannah is Asiya, who was the foster mother of Sayyidina Musa Kalimullah alayhi salatu wasalam. She brought up Musa alayhi salatu wasalam in the palace of Fir'aun, Asiya. And Sayyida Maryam is obviously the mother of Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam declared that the four most noble women of Jannah are these four. And out of the four, two of them are related to one another. And most importantly, they are related to none other than Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. One is of course the first wife of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa the first zawja of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Khadijat al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha. And the second is the blood of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Fatima to bintu Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So today, on this day of this urs and this maulid, I would like to dedicate today and this function and my discussion today to the nisa of Ahlul Bayt. To the women of the prophetic household, the women of the Ahl Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Because do we know who they are? We know about Haydar al-Karrar. We know about Imam al-Hasan. We know about Imam al-Hussein. We know about Imam, ja Imam Ja'far al-Tayyar. We know about Aqil. We know as a Muslim bin Aqil. We know about Imam Baqir. We know about Imam Ja'far. We know about Imam Musa Kazim. But we, do we know who Sakina is? Do we know who Rabab or Rabab is? Do we know who Shehrbanu is? Do we know who Zainab bint Ali is? Do we know who they are? So let us dedicate today to the Nisa of Ahlul Bayt. And as they say, why are they so important? We speak about Imam al Hussein, we speak about Imam al Hassan. But let's speak about these women today. And Aj Chalo Salam Kare. Chalo, salam kare aise astane par. Come, let us present our salutations today at such an astana. Which astana is this? This is the astana of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Chalo, chalo, salam kare aise astane par. Which astana? Hussain Palakar jisne diya zamane ko. At that Astana, who were responsible for rearing and bringing up who we know today as the Dulaha of Karbala, Sayyid al Shuhada, Imam al Hussein, alayhi salatu salam. Chalo salam kare, aise Astane par, Hussein paal kar, jisne diya zamane ko. Who is the grandmother? Who is the nani of Imam al Hussein, alayhi salatu salam? It is Khadijah al Kubra, radiallahu ta'ala. Ta Do we know who she is? Wallah. When Jibreel Amin alayhi salatu wasalam came in the holy month of Ramadan al-Mubarak, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was in the cave of Hira, he was engaging in muraqaba and meditation. Jibreel Amin came with the first revelation of the holy Quran. 
first time ever officially Jibreel comes with a wahi from Allah and Jibreel came with the message of Ikhra Bismi Rabbika alladhi khalaq Khalaq al-insana min alaq Ikhra wa Rabbuka al-akram Alladhi allama bil khalam Allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam These were the three, the, the verses that were first revealed to Huzur Anwar alayhi salatu wasalam Huzur Anwar alayhi salatu wasalam when he received this revelation out of excitement and in a state of awe and in a state of, of bewilderment and wajd Huzur Anwar alayhi salatu wasalam could not contain his excitement and he was shaking and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam descended all the way from the cave of Hira in Jabal nur And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam came straight. He didn't go to his friend Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He didn't go to any of the ashraf of Makkah. He didn't go to the, any of the leaders of the Bani Abdul Muttalib or the Bani Hashim. He didn't go to anywhere. Naray Takbir. He didn't go anywhere. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam when he first received the first official wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Huzur Anwar alayhi salatu wa descendant from the cave of Hira and he went straight home. And the first person in the history of mankind to be the recipient and to hear officially the wahi from the zuban of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam for the first time was none other than Ummul Mu'mineen Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha. And what happened? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is looking at his beloved wife and he's telling her, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, cover me, cover me. He spoke to Khadija al-Kubra and he's telling her, Oh Khadija, cover me with a blanket, cover me. And what did Allah respond? He loved that action of Khadija al-Kubra of covering the Prophet sallallahu in the shawl so much that Allah called Rasulullah, Ya ayyuhal muzammil. Allah called him, Ya ayyuhal muzammil. Wallah, the first person to receive the wahi and to hear the wahi from the tongue of Rasulullah sallallahu was Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha. And mind you, the first human being from male or female to have read the kalima and taken shahada was not a male the first person to accept islam upon the hand of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was khadija al-kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha so you can confidently say that the first muslim upon the hand of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on planet earth was none other than ummul mu'mineen khadija al-kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha Allahu Akbar. Do you know who this Khadija is? Do you know who this Khadija is? She is the one when no one supported Rasulullah, when everyone was boycotting Rasulullah, when everyone was against Rasulullah sallallahu the first person to have brought Iman on him and supported his message with her wealth, with her health, with everything that she had was none other than Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha. And wallah, her sacrifices are so great. Her sacrifices are so great, it is narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari and it's a muttafaq alayh hadith. And I'm bringing two ahadiths to you. One is from the words of Sahih al-Bukhari and the one is from Imam al-Nisai who, who, who added an addition to it. It is narrated that one day when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was engaged in some activity, Jibreel amin alayhi salatu sam descends from the heavens. This is in the words of Sahih al-Bukhari, muttafaq alayh hadith. Jibreel Amin alayhi salatu salam descends and he sends salams to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and he informs Rasulullah that Ya Rasulullah just now Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala an'aha is going to be coming to you and in what condition is she coming to you? She's coming to you in a condition when she's got some tarkari you know some curry and she's got some food and she's got something to drink for you. She's coming with an entire parcel of food and drink to you, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Khadija Al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha comes to you in your presence, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the words of Sahih Al-Bukhari ha, Fakhra alayha salam. Then send salams upon Khadija Al-Kubra. From who? Min Rabbiha. From her Lord. Allah ki taraf se Khadija ko Salam pesh karo. And bring Pir Jibreel Amin ne farmaya. Wa minni. And from me. Khadija. Allah is sending salams upon you. 
आका अलही सलात सलाम पर मलाइका सारे जिन इन सब सलाम भेजते हैं और खदीजा पर खुद खुदा सलाम भेजता है अल्लाह अकबर खदीजतुबरा रजी तबरील अमीन आलिम फरमा रहे और मेरी तरफ से भी सलाम पेश करो वही टू माई नॉलेज to my knowledge and i'm open to correction here there isn't a single new human being that i know of besides khadijah al kubra radhiyallahu ta'ala anha in ahadith and in history when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam by jibril that tell khadijah allah sends his salams to her when khadijah al kubra radhiyallahu ta'ala anha came and these are the words of imam nisai when she came there exactly as jibril amin alayhi salatu wassalam described when she came there with the tarkari and she came there with the food stuff and she came with the drinks there and when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told her oh khadijah what a moment it must be for a husband leave the prophet of allah for a husband to hear that my wife is so leave alone beloved to me but it is so beloved to allah that allah sends salams upon my wife Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Nare salat ala bika damat panjadan pakistan Ja Jibril ila an-nabi wa 'indahu Khadija qala inna Allah yukhri'u Khadijah as-salam When Khadijah al-Kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha hears that Allah ne salam pesh kiya Khadijah al-Kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha is taken aback Rabb ne mujh par salam kiya She know how she responded fa qalat she said inna Allah huwa as-salam Allah himself is as-salam And then she said, "Wa ala Jibril as salam," and upon Jibril salam as well. And then she looked at her beloved husband Muhammadur Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, and she said, "Wa alaik as salam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatu." Wallah, what we learn from this that huzur par salam bejna sunnat e Khadija hai. It is sunnah of Khadija al Kubra radiyallahu taala anha. She responded, "Wa Allah as salam, wa ala Jibril as salam, wa alaik as salam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatu." Khadija al Kubra radiyallahu taala anha. This is that woman who we are talking about to a point when Umm al Mu'minin Aisha al Siddiqa radiyallahu taala anha used to say that we were not jealous and envious about anybody. the way we were envious about ummul mu'minin khadijah al kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha and it is narrated in some of the books of sira that it is narrated that during the conquest of makkah when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam was asked ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell me tell me where must we pitch your tent aapka khaima kahan lagaye to huzur anwar ali sallam ne farmaya jahan bhi chaho lagao lekin ye to koshish to karo कि मेरा खेमा जो है कब्र खदीजा के बिल्कुल करीब रहे दैट माय टेंट मस्ट बी एस क्लोज टू द मजार एंड द कबर ऑफ खदीजतुल कुब्रा रजी अल्लाह तहा अल्लाह अकबर एंड व्हाट वाज द आउटकम of this ziwaj and this nikah between Khadija al-Kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha and Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam we had Sayyida Rukhayya we had Sayyida Umm Kulsum we had Sayyida Zainab and then you had one You had one, and her name is Fatima, bint Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. Wallah, wallah. I don't think there's anyone who's been created in the universe the way Fatima bint Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam was created by Allah subhanahu wa taala. Wallah, Huzur Arwan alaihi salatam himself asked her, "Allah tardain, are you not pleased? Ya tum isse razi nahi ho?" and the queen is sayyida nisa al alamin that you are the mistress and the queen of the woman of the universe not of planet earth the whole universe as we know it and the queen is sayyida nisa al alamin and wa sayyida nisa hadhihi al ummah and you are the leader of the woman of this ummah and wa sayyida nisa ahli al jannah and you are the leader of the woman of paradise huzur kya farma rahe hain chahe ye duniya ho चाहे वो दुनिया हो चाहे यहां हो चाहे वहां हो चाहे दुनिया हो या आखिरत हो सब जगह में हर जगह में हर जगह पे हर वक्त पे सिर्फ एक ही सईदा है और वो सईदत निसाई अहली जन्ना फातिमत जहरा बिनती रसूल सल्लाम डो द अदब एंड एहतराम ऑफ मोहम्मद रसूलरा 
She is coming to the house of Rasulullah after she was married. You know, we talk about Sajjada Nasheen. We talk about Jaan Nasheen. Jaan Nasheen ka matlab hai jage pe bethne wala. Ja ka matlab hai jaga. Nasheen, nashistan, bethna. The one who takes your place. The one who takes your seat. Who takes over after you. That is Jaan Nasheen. Who is the Jaan Nasheen of Mustafa? Who is the Jaan Nasheen of Mustafa? Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Ali the baad mein. Hassan the baad mein. Hussein the baad mein. Tamam aimma ahle bayt the baad mein. Lekin pehle janashin jo hai. Fatima ta zahra raji Allah ta'ala anha is. And she stated there. Rahul Hakim. He said, Ida dakhalat alayhi. Rahaba biha. When she used to enter the door. Adaban ehtiraman. Rasulullah would get up to welcome her. Marhaba. Marhaba ya bint. Marhaba, welcome to you, my daughter. And then you say, Fakama ilayha. He would stand up in adab for Fatima Taz Zahra. For that Rasul of Allah, in front of whose darwaza Jibreel Amin stands as a guard, as a darban day. Rasulullah is standing up for Fatima Taz Zahra. He'll stand there. He will greet her. And you know what the words are of Hakim? He said, Fa'akhada biyadiha. He would hold her hand. After kare hone ke baad, he would hold her hand. Fa'akhada biyadiha. Fa'kabbalaha. Ar Rasulullah Fatima Taz Zahra ke haathon ko chuma kerte the. Allahu Akbar. ہم نے عدب کہاں سے سیکھا ہم نے عدب کہاں سے سیکھا طریقے میں عدب رسول اللہ سے سیکھا رسول اللہ نے ہمیں بتایا ہے کہ جان شینوں کی عدب اور تعظیم ایسے کیا کرتے ہیں فَقَبَّلَ يَدَهَا وَأَجْلَسَهَا فِي مَجْلِسِهِ ان حضور کھڑے ہو کے جگہ سے ہٹ جاتے رسول اللہ if you were sitting there رسول اللہ would move away from that place and he would tell Fatima, you go and sit there where I was seated. Allahu Akbar. Ye kon hai hai? Allahu Akbar. Izzat. Allahu Akbar. Izzat khuda ki Fatima. Binte nabi batool hai. Izzat khuda ki Fatima. Binte nabi batool hai. Wo, wo Fatima. Wo jis ke ehtiram mein dar par khade rasool hai. وہ جس کے احترام میں در پر کھڑے رسول اللہ امیزن در کنڈیشن ساری دنیا رسول اللہ کے لیے قیامت دن کھڑے ہوں گے کھڑے ہوں گے میدان محشر میں اور حضور دنیا میں فاطمہ تزہرہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ نے کھڑے ہو جاتے ہیں اللہ اکبر وہ جس کے احترام میں در پر کھڑے رسول ہیں that is that فاطمہ تزہرہ بنت رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم and you know what you know what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? The whole dunya, the whole universe is sacrificed on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Hussain sacrificed himself on Rasulullah. Imam Hassan sacrificed him on Rasulullah. The Ahle Bayt in Karbala sacrificed themselves in the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But if Rasulullah were given a choice, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, tell us, who will you sacrifice? your life for and your mother's life for and your father's life for then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say yeah I would say the only person Rasulullah will say fida ka abhi wa ummi that mere ma baap aap par qurban ho Rasulullah used to say that for Fatima ta zahra binti Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fida ka ummi fida ka abhi wa ummi may my parents Abdullah and Amina may your grandparents be sacrificed for you O Fatima ta zahra binti Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam these are the woman of Ahlul Bayt Bidi Fatima Taz Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha is known as Ummu Abiha the mother of her father there are two meanings to this one is that after Khadid al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha made parda from the dunya she took on the responsibility of taking care of her father but besides that Umm also means origin source Umm al-Kitab Umm al-Qura and so on which means the source the mother of all villages the mother of all books which means that for huzur anwar alayhi salatsam all the books of ahadith and so on call her ummu abiha why because she was the very source of the progeny of muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and huzur anwar alayhi salatsam progeny and the ahlul bayt continued from the lineage of fatima taz zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha huzur anwar alayhi salatu sallam stated fatima tu bada'atum minni fatima mere jigir ke tukri hai she's a part of me 
She is part of me. She is who I am. And you know what her maqam is there? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anwar alayhi salatu wa stated there. He said, Inna Allah yaghribu li ghadabik. The fat, maqam of Fatima al-Zahra is, if Fatima al-Zahra is angry, Rasulullah stated, Allah becomes angry. Bila tashbih wa tamsi. Okay? When Fatima al-Zahra becomes angry, Allah becomes angry. And when Fatima al-Zahra becomes happy, Allah becomes happy. But I, do we know anything about the Nisa of Ahlul Bayt? Who are these people? Wallah, we all are slaves at the door. And if we've received Hussein, we've got Hussein because of Hadith al Kubra and Fatima al Zahra. If we have the Ahlul Bayt, it is because of Hadith al Kubra and Fatima al Zahra. And Wallahi, I want to introduce you to one more person. And I'm going to focus my discussion on her because we very rarely, if ever, have ever discussed her. And that is one woman. And I'm going to start off her story with a very, very painful discussion. And the story goes like this. It is the martyrdom of Imam Al-Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam. Imam Al-Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu has just been martyred. And in that condition, in that condition, she is also present in Karbala. Who is this woman? This is Sayyida Zainab bint Ali. Zainab bint Ali. She is the daughter of Imam Ali karamullahu ta'ala wajahul kareem. She is the sister of Imam Hussein alayhi salatu was salam. And she is there. She is there when the martyrdom takes place. Imam al Hussein's body has been trampled on the commandments of Umar, Umar Sa'ad with 10 horses trampling the body of Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu on the battlefield of Karbala. And in that condition, Umar Sa'ad instructs his army to go inside the tents of the Ahlul Bayt and he instructs them that remove their veils and remove the hijab from the heads of Ahlul Bayt the women of Ahlul Bayt those women of Ahlul Bayt whose head and whose hair even the sky had never ever seen before today Amar Sa'ad is instructing to remove the hijab from the heads of Ahlul Bayt the army goes inside without any adab without any ihtiram they go inside the, into the khayma of, of the Ahlul Bayt and they go there, they pull the chadar of the head of Sayyidah Fatima, Sughra. They, they pull off the chadar of the head of Sayyidah Rabab. So they pull off the head of Sayyidah Umm Kul, Kulsum. They take off the chadar of Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. Then they tie them up as prisoners of war, as captives. And then bring, take them out of the khaymas, out of the tents. It is at that moment that the history of Sayyidah Zainab bint Ali starts. Sayyidah Zainab comes out there with her hair uncovered, unfortunately, because of these uh, Iblises. She comes out there. And when she comes out, she sees lying on the battlefield on one side. She sees her own two sons, Aun and Muhammad. Aun and Muhammad are her two sons. She sees them martyred on the battlefield of Karbala. On that side, she sees her nephew, Qasim bin Hassan. On the other side, she sees Ali Asghar. On the other side, she sees Ali Akbar. And then eventually, she comes there and she sees her brother, Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam, lying there on the battlefield, cut up into pieces with his body trampled upon there. And in that condition, Ali ka ghar bi kya ghar hai? Ali ka ghar bi kya ghar hai? Ke jis ghar ka harik bacha. Ali ka ghar bi kya ghar hai? Ke jis ghar ka harik bacha. Jaha peda hua shere khuda malum hota hai. Wallah, the Jalale Haydari comes out in Sayyidah bint Muhammad bint Ali and she walks out there and she sees her brother in that condition and she stands there with all the army of four to twelve thousand people standing there and she says, Ya Muhammad, Allahu Akbar, Ya Muhammad, do you see what the Bapu Kartir? So it's not Perega, Allah ko Pukarna, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Akida is Zainab de Kayab. اور نظرِ دے زینب دیکھیں آپ اور فراستِ زینب دیکھیں آپ حضور نے کیا فرمایا سنن تنو جامع ترمیزی کی حدیث ہے حضور نے فرمایا حصہ تو ام سلمہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ شہید تو قتل الحسین آنفا that I am witness to the shahadah of امام الحسین and I've been here from the morning collecting the blood of the martyrs of Karbala so when سیدہ زینب walked out 
and she saw the bodies of Hussein and Ali Azhar and Ali Akbar and Aoun and Muhammad and her entire family. The first person that she saw who was a witness to the whole martyrdom of Karbala was her grandfather, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, you shocked? But I hear Rasul Azam, Yaha Bedke, Waha Dekte, Omar ibn Khattab, Madine Mekare Hoke, Waha Chalitata, Yasari al Jabal Kedete, to Sayyida Zaina Binte Ali, Babi Ainki Betty Mekashmane, Unme Kashmane, Unme Kashmane. She stood and said, Ya Muhammada, she called out to her grandfather, Ya Muhammada, Ya Muhammada, Sali ala malaika to Sama, ala malaika to Sama, Ya Rasulla, upper malaika, Asman ke malaika, upper Durud Beje. Allahu Akbar. Salli ala malaika to Sama. And then she says, Hada Husseinum bil ara. She's telling her, Sulla, Ya Rasulla, they're here. There is Hussein lying there. He's lying on the floor. Muhammad, Hada Husseinum bil ara. Muzammilum bil dima. Arkhun me lutra hua Hussein, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muqatta'un bil aaza. And uske samam aaza sab kate hue, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She stops. She says, Ya Muhammada. Ya Muhammad, oh my grandfather, Ya Muhammad, wa banatuka sibaya. And aapki betiya jo hai, kaidi bani hui hai. They are locked up, they've been tied up. Wa zurriyatika muqattalun. And aapki tamam zurriyat ko qatal kiya gaya hai, Ya Rasulullah. They've been martyred, Ya Rasulullah. And then she turns around and he says there, he says, wa tasfi biha saba. Tasfi alayhi mus saba. And what she said, and the, the, the wind is throwing dust on your family, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya, look at this condition. Witness it, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyida Zainab bint Ali, Karamullah Ta'ala Wajhahu al I ask you a question. Who confronted Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad? Imam Hussein? Who confronted Yazid? Imam Hassan? Imam Ali? Imam Ali Zain al Abidin? Who confronted the two oppressors of the time who were responsible for the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein? None of the men from Ahlul Bayt confronted Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, nor did any of the men confront Yazid. Imam Ali Zain al-Abidin was there. He was still a young child. If anyone confronted Yazid, Palid, and Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, then it was Sayyida Zainab bint Ali. Ajib mamla hai na? Ajib mamla hai na? Why? Why Zainab ya Rasulullah? Why not Hussein? Why not Hassan? Why not Ali Zain al Abidin? Why not any of the other, other members of the family? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show all these oppressors and all these tyrants and all these Yazidis. Allah wanted to show Hussein ki bari dur baat hai. Hussein is too far away. Hussein is too far away. Zulfiqar of Ali is too strong for you. Wallah, the tongue of my granddaughter Zainab will cut Yazid and Ubaidullah Ziyad into pieces. If this is the maqam of my Zainab, that she can stand up and take on Yazid bin Muawiyah alone, and Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad alone, imagine if my Hussein was there to take them on. That's what Allah wanted to show us. And Wallahi, Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha wa alayha salatu was salam, she goes, she, she goes, and she goes right there to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad's court. When she goes into Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad's court, right, she stands there and she's got, you know, the old clothes on. They're all in chains. They have old clothes on. And she went and sat in one corner. So Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad doesn't know who Sayyida Zainab is. But he sees that although she's dressed up in old clothes, everyone seems to be like going towards her. Everyone is inclined towards Sayyida Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. So when they're inclined towards Sayyida Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha, then he asks there, who is this? Everyone kept quiet. He asked again, who is this woman? They kept quiet. He actually used the word, who is the slave? Who is this slave? So eventually one of the khuddam of Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha wa alayha salatu sam couldn't take it anymore. She said, you know who this is? Watch your tongue. This is Zainab bint Ali. This is the daughter of Ali, Zainab. When Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad hears this, when he hears this day, he stood up. And he gave these words and I'm going to render it to you because I want to show you what the sword of the tongue of Zainab is all about. 
Let's see. The Prophet said, Inna min a'adhami al-jihad. Most definitely, the best jihad. Man qala kalimata adlin inda sultan in jayid. Whoever speaks the words of justice before an oppressive ruler, the greatest jihad is that you speak the words of justice before a tyrant ruler. Hussein didn't do that. Rasulullah said, Don't think Hussein and Hassan are only from my Ahlul Bayt. Remember that I have the lionesses of my Ahlul Bayt who will teach you what deen is all about. So when they come there, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, he says this words. He says, Alhamdulillah, he fadahakum wa qattalakum wa agdaba ahadu wa thadakum. What he said there? He said this words here. He said, Praise be to God who has disgraced you. He's telling Fatima, he's telling Zainab, killed you and reveal the false nature of your claims. He says this to Zainab bint Ali. She turns around and she says, Alhamdulillah, look at her khutbah. Alhamdulillah, alladhi akramana bi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam wa tahharana tathheera. She said, Paul praises to Allah who blessed us with Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and he granted us tahharakum tathheera and he purified us on absolute purification. And then she looks at him and he says, La kama taqulu ant. He said, you are right. The way you said it is true. He disgraces the great sinner and he reveals the false nature of the liar. And she said, thank Allah, no men like this are amongst us. Abuidullah ibn Ziyad gave the shock of his life. She's in, she's in chains. And she's saying these words and she has no fear. She's Hedari Karra's daughter. What is she going to fear? He turns around there and he says, فَكَيْفَ رَأَيْدِ سَنَ اللَّهُ بِأَهْلِ بَيْتِكَ So Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad says, well, what do you have to say about the way Allah treated your family? Look at the gustakhiyah. Ahle paak se gustakhiyah, ahle bayte paak se gustakhiyah be baakiyah. Ahle bayte paak se gustakhiyah be baakiyah. لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ دُشْمَنَانِ أَهْلِ بَيْتِ he comes there and she stands up there and she says, is that the case there? He said, قَالَتْ كُتِبَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْقَتَلْ فَبَرَزُوا إِلَىٰ مَضَاجِعِهِمْ وَسَيَجْمَعُ اللَّهُ بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنِهِمْ فَتَحَاجُّونَ إِلَيْهِ وَتَخَاسَمُونَ عِنْدَهِ She says, Allah has declared martyrdom for them and they have gone to their respective destination which is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But she told him, remember one thing, on the day of Qiyamah, we will be gathered together we the Ahlul Bayt on one side and you Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad on the other side. And we will stand up as witnesses against you, O Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Wallah, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad got into a, you know, like a foot he got and he was about to attack Sayyida Zainab ta'ala until one of the people said, yeah, yeah, what are you doing Abu Ubaidullah? It's a woman, leave her alone. Leave her alone. This is Sayyidah Zainab in the court of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Now let's go very quickly into the court of Yazid Balid bin Muawiyah. She comes there into the, the, into the court of Yazid. Firstly, what happens is this. Is that again, she's made to be like a slave. With the slave people all locked up. Because they were hung, you know, with the, with the chain around their necks. With their hands like this and their legs tied up. So Sayyidah Zainab bint Fatima anha is seated there. And Yazid walks in and he sits down. And he speaks to Ali Zain al Abidin and so on, and then he calls for the women. And what Yazid said, he said, Bring those slave girls here, bring them and come. When he said, Bring those slave girls here, one of the women of the Khuddam of Ahlul Bayt by the name of Sayyida Fidda, Bibi Fizza, she is buried in Damascus in Bab Sahir near the maqam of Ahlul Bayt. Bibi Fizza was an Abyssinian slave from the era of Fatima al Zahra bint Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was responsible for bringing up Imam al Hussein, Imam al Hassan, and Sayyidah Zainab. And she was their ghulam for all these years. When, when, when Yazid called Zainab a slave, Sayyida Fizza radiallahu ta'ala ta stood up and she said, Oh Yazid, shut your mouth. Do you know who you're speaking about? Do you know who you're addressing? You're addressing the daughter Sayyida Zainab bint Ali bint Fatima bint Muhammad Rasulullah. Be careful how you speak. Yazid got into a state of anger and he got up and he said, take her head off. Take Sayyida Fizza's head off. When Sayyida Fizza made the statement and Yazid said, take her head off there, there were a whole lot of other Abyssinian soldiers who were working for Yazid bin Muawiyah. And when they heard that Yazid instructed that they must take the head of Fizza off, these Abyssinian soldiers got up and they unsheathed their sword and said, Wallah, Yazid, Yazid, 
She is from our people. She's an Abyssinian woman. She's from Africa. And wallahi, if you dare touch her, we will take your head off first. Allahu Akbar. But you know what happened after that? Yazid kept quiet. But when Bibi Zainab radiallahu ta'ala her heard this here, she turns around and she turns towards Medina and she says, Oh my grandfather, hey, mere nana, for one African woman of Abyssinia, so many people stood up to protect her. But Ya Rasulullah, there's no one to protect your family, the Ahlul Bayt right now. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. People got the shock of their lives. Eventually, when Shami with very reddish faces came there and he looked at Bibi Fatima Suhra, who was the youngest sister of Sayyidah Zainab. When she was sitting there and she looked at Sayyidah Zainab, he told Yazid, Habli, give her to me as a gift. Fatima Suhra says that I got so afraid that I hid behind my sister's dress. I said, Sayyidah Zainab, I hid behind her. When she heard this and she said, Oh, my sister, help me out. So Bibi, uh, Bibi Sayyidah Zainab anha goes around there and she looks at Yazid. She said, oh Yazid, do not touch Fatima because this is not permissible for you. You are not allowed to do this. And if you decide to do this, that you give away Fatima Suhra as a slave to this man, then wallahi, the only time you can do it is that if you get out of our deen and our religion, meaning you'll become a kafir. When Yazid heard that she is calling him a kafir, so Yazid stood up and he said, Wallahi, I swear by God, I can do whatever I want to do. And I will do it if I want to do it. And there's nothing that you can do about it. So Fatima Hazrat Zainab radiallahu got up and she said, Wallahi, oh Yazid, you can't do this. Because if you do this, then you will be out of the fold of Islam and you will be a kafir. And she said, because Wallah, Wallah, if you have been blessed with deen, if your father was blessed with deen, and if your grandfather was blessed with deen, then you were blessed with deen because of my grandfather, because of my father, and because of my brother. Yes, he got into a state of anger. He said, how dare you talk to me like that? Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala told him, I can talk as I want to because you are a musallat amirul mu'minin. You are a amirul mu'minin who took this position because of power, because of might. And you've taken it and usurped this right from the Ahlul Bayt. And I can talk to you in any way whatsoever. So you know what Amir Muawiyah said? He said, oh Zainab, you, your father and your brother are out of the fold of deen. Not me, my father and my grandfather. Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala once up got, got again and she was about to open her mouth again to tell him something there until the people said, oh Sayyidah Zainab, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Because if you go any further there, Yazid won't do something stupid. And Sayyidah Zainab said, I am not afraid of anybody. And I will do whatever I want to do. And I like to see what Yazid will have to do about it. If he's got guts, if he's a man, tell him to take on Zainab. When she said this one here, the words of Bilaya wa Nihaya is that Yazid sharminda ho gaya. Yazid sharminda ho gaya, reh jaga bed gaya. Allahu Akbar. You know, the shayir says very nicely, he says, Lakho salam binte Ali tere naam upar. Lakho salam binte Ali tere naam upar. Ghabrai tu zara nasitam gar ke saamne. Ghabrai na tu zara sitam gar ke saamne. Wallah, you're talking to Yazid. And the condition, you know, there's a very long khutbah of Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha, which she gave in the court of Yazid. But there's no time to discuss that in detail there. Because wallahi, every word that she said, she astonished the people in the court of Yazid. And the shahir said, wo khutbah e Zainab. That khutbah of Zainab. Wo khutbah e Zainab ke Ali bol rahe the. Was Zainab speaking? Wo khutbah e Zainab. کہ علی بول رہے تھے ہر لفظ پہ فقہ تھا بھرے دو دو دربار کا چہرہ اور ایوری ورڈ دیٹ شی مینشن پیپل وو سٹینڈنگ دا اسٹونش دیٹ ہو از دی سپیکنگ از دی زینب بنت علی سپیکنگ is this Zainab bint Ali speaking? Or is this Ali karam Allah ta'ala wajhul kareem himself speaking? Wallahi, when they left the darbar or the so-called court of Yazid and they were being paraded in the streets of Damascus People gathered onto the housetops and the rooftops to go and see these so-called prisoners of war. That, and the people of Damascus were informed that this, these people that you are seeing here right now, they are the people that rebelled against so-called Amirul Mu'minin, Yazid bin Muawiyah. So everyone thought that these people were prisoners of war. So anyway, Fatima Tazahra, sorry, Sayyidah Zainab is walking in the, in the entourage, right? And it is being led 
The entourage of those people that is being led by this head of Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam on spears. In that condition. In that condition, the people are, you know, they're all, you know, gathered on top of the rooftops to see this majra here, see this big scene of these people being paraded like prisoners of war. And who are they? Ahlul Bayt. One woman, old woman, she sees these prisoners of war coming through. And she sees these people are hungry. You can see they are thirsty. You can see that they're tired. So this elderly woman, she rushes down quickly. She brings out some food. She brings out some water. And she goes there to all of the women. And she says, you know what? There's some food for you. There's some drink for you. And she gives each one of the women something to eat and something to drink. Imam Ali, Zain al-Abidin and all of them. Finally, Sayyidah Zainab kept on telling them, you know, give it to others, give it to others, give it to others. Eventually, she comes to Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. And she says, come, have something to eat. Come, have something to drink. So Sayyidah Zainab says, Jazakallah khair al jaza. May Allah give you the greatest of reward. Tell me, why did you decide to help us? Why did you decide to help us? What happened? I mean, everyone else stood here and they were looking at the spectacle of us in this condition that we are in. You were the only person who came down and you came to help us. Why? Can you tell me why? So the old lady responded. She said, Bibi, I don't know who you are, but many, many, many years ago, I used to live in Al Madinatul Munawwara. I used to live in Al Madinatul Munawwara. And I used to be the servant in the house of Fatima Taz Zahra. I was a servant in the house of Fatima Taz Zahra. I used to take care of the little children of us, Hassan Hussein and Sayyida Zainab. Right? And the other children, I used to take care of them. And she says, she says, when I was leaving Medina to come back to my home in Sham, I went to Bibi Fatima Taz Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha. And I asked her, Ya Sayyid Nisa Ahli Jannah, give me some wasiya. Give me a little bit of advice. So Fatima Taz Zahra told her that in your life, if you see any prisoner of war and you see them hungry and thirsty, unko zara khana khila dena aur pani pila dena. Allahu Akbar. She says, when I saw this entourage coming and I saw your faces, I thought about the wasiyah of Fatima Taz Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha and I ran down and I said, let me at least fulfill this, this command of my Sayyidah Fatima Taz Zahra. So I came with the food and the drink. Sayyidah Zainab is not telling her anything. Sayyidah Zainab says, what can I do to repay this back to you? So this elderly woman, she says, oh Bibi, do me one favor, make dua, you are an Asir, you are a prisoner. Make one dua that I've gone very old right now. I have one khahish left. That Sayyidah Shabab ya Ahlil Jannah and Sayyidah Nisa ya Ahlil Jannah, Hussein and Zainab and all those children that I should take care of, make dua that Allah makes me see them one more time before I pass away. Make, make dua. Sayyidah Zainab burst out into tears. She said, Wallah, Allah has answered your dua because I am Zainab. I am Zainab. And you see that head in front of you, they're on spears. That is the head of your Hussein that you used to care, take care of. Allahu Akbar. These are Ahlul Bayt. These are Ahlul Bayt. Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha was such a revolutionary that when she returned to Al Madinatul Munawwara, she started to, she started to rally the forces of Medina, speaking about the shahada of Imam al Hussein because she was the sole ambassador to carry on the legacy of Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu salam. She used to sit down and you know we call what we call majalis. Majalis means gatherings. She used to have gathering upon gathering upon gathering in Medina, informing people about the Shahada of Al Hussein and the oppression of Yazid to a point when she became such a scary figure and such a figure of power and force in Medina that the governor of Medina wrote to Yazid bin Muawiyah and he told, her, oh, told him, Oh Yazid, I fear for my life and I fear for my governorship as long as Zainab bin Ali is in Medina. So he told him, please expel, expel and exile Zainab bin Ali from Medina. Because if you don't, wallahi, only because of Zainab's khutbas, only because of Zainab's majalis, wallahi, there will be a revolution in Medina. Yazid sent an immediate command to tell Sayyidah Zainab, leave Medina or else. Leave Medina or else. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas ta'ala anhu came to her and he told her, oh Zainab, Leave Medina, leave Medina and go away all the way to Masr, Egypt. There are people there who love Ahlul Bayt 
and there are people there who love the family of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Go away over there and wallahi you will find that condition that you are looking for that you will not find in this place al Madina. She stood there and she looked at him. She said, what has happened to the dunya? What has happened to the dunya? That today Zainab can't even live in the city of her grandfather. She can't live in the city of her grandfather. Wallahi, she spent the rest of her life in Egypt and she made parda there in Egypt as well. And I just want to conclude with one more story. We spoke about Sayyidah Zainab in detail. I wanted to dedicate today's lecture to Sayyidah Zainab. But there is one more woman. The woman of Ahlul Bayt, the daughter of Ali, is in league of her own. But even the wives of the Ahlul Bayt, even the wives of Imam al Hassan and even the wives of Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam were also in a league of their own there. And wallahi, it is stated that for the period of time, for the period of time there, after Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam was made shaheed, when he was made shaheed, when Imam Hussein was made shaheed, then everyone left. Everyone left to Medina. All went way back to Medina. Sayyida Rubab, radiallahu ta'ala anha, wa alayha salatu wa salam stayed back in Karbala. Allama ibn Kathir in al-Bidaya wa al-Nihaya stayed. Sayyida Rubab sat and stayed by the grave of Imam al-Husayn alayhi salatu wa salam for a period of one full year. At the mazar of Imam al-Husayn for one full year with no chat, with no covering with no uh, you know, tent or something there to keep her away from the hot sun of the desert of Iraq and the desert of Karbala. For one year she sat there. After one year, when she got up from there, she said, إِلَى الْحَوْلِ ثُمَّ اسْمُ السَّلَامِ عَلَيْكُمَا وَمَنْ يَبْكِي حَوْلًا كَامِلًا فَقَدْ اعتذر. She said, now it's time. I sing salamu alaykum to all of the shuhada of Karbala after one year. And she said, وَمَنْ يَبْكِي حَوْلًا كَامِلًا And whosoever cries and mourns for one full year. Then he said, فَقَدْ يَعْتَذَرْ Then she is the person who is ma'zur. You can't blame her. No one can cry for one full year. But imagine what a husband Hussein must have been for Sayyidah Rubab. That she stood there in the heat of Karbala for one full year at the mazar of her husband Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam. You know what Imam Hussein used to say? Daran, fihi sakinatu war rabab. He used to write shairi for Sayyidah Rubab and Sayyidah Sakina. And he said, Daran, fihi sakinatu war rabab. I love that home where in Sakina and Rubab live. Wallah, that's why she stayed there for one year. When she went back to Medina for the rest of her life, Sayyidah Rubab never ever took the shade of the sun or anything else. She remained in the heat all the time. People asked her, Sayyidah Rabab, why are you doing this? She said, Wallahi, how can I stand under any shade when my Hussein and my Ali Asghar and Ali Akbar were all martyred there under the heat of the sun? People came to her and they told her, Sayyidah Rabab, come, we'll take away your husband and your sadness. And Wallahi, come, we'll give you an offer of marriage. She said, yes, I accept your offer of marriage. But bring me a husband first like Hussein. Bring me a father-in-law like Ali. Bring me a mother-in-law like Fatima. And bring me a grandfather-in-law like Rasulullah sallallahu If you can bring someone like that, then Rabab will marry her. Just to complete, and this is the message we want to put across. Sajde kare hazar tu. Sajde kare hazar tu. Par dil me ho bughze aale bayt. Sajde kare hazar tu. Dil me ho bughze aale bayt. Jannat me tu bhi jayega. Ye sochna fuzul hai. Sajde kare hazar tu. Dil me ho bughze aale bayt. Jannat me tu bhi jayega Ye sochna fuzul hai Ye sochna fuzul hai Today Today There is an onslaught From two sides With regards to Ahlul Bayt And we the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah Are standing in the mid center of it On one side You have the onslaught Of the Shia faction Who claim to be Shiatul Ali Who claim love for Ahlul Bayt But they have hatred for Khulafai Rashidin 
and they are claiming ownership and they are claiming muhabbat and they are claiming nisbat with ahlul bayt that's on one side and your other side you have the worst of creation whom shirarul khalaiq the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said they are the kharijis the neo salafis who are trying to take away the people from the family of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they are trying to cut off the nisbat and the link and the ta'alluq and the muhabbat and the spiritual affiliation that the ummah should have must have must always have with ahlul bayt we are stuck between the two people are making it difficult for us to even mention ahlul bayt they give no significance to it from the kharijis they give no significance to al hussein today they are too afraid to say imam al hussein when they address him in their articles when they address him in their books they say hazrat hussein i'm putting this message across to quite a few functions because we need to put this thing right we are ahlus sunnah wal jamaah Imam Bukhari ko Imam Bukhari kehte hain we say Imam Azam Imam Abu Hanifa Imam Malik but for our people who call themselves Ahlus Sunnah wal Jamaah but they are hidden closet nasibis they will say Hazrat Hussein what is wrong with us what is wrong with us and then if you ask them by make yourself clear which way are you going because every article that you write every lecture that you give there is more sympathetic towards Yazid then be support of al al, al hussein what is it what is it why no significance to the shahada of al hussein why no significance to ahlul bayt what do you have to hide what do you have to hide why are you duping the community out there wallahi today the shia group came we are the only lovers of ahlul bayt and why is that because we the sunnis who have a greater right over them have not claimed the right for ahlul bayt We have not claimed the right for Ahlul Bayt. Wallahi, we have not. Our children, our mothers, our sisters, Wallahi, dear sir, maaf karna. Some of our scholars don't know who Sayyida Zainab is. They don't know anything about her. They don't know who the Imams of Ahlul Bayt are. They don't know Imam Ali Zain al Abidin. They don't. They don't know Imam uh, Imam Baqir. They don't know Imam Jaafar. They don't know Imam Ali Musa Kadi. Imam Ali Rida. Imam Muhammad Taqi. Imam. They don't know them. They don't know them. Why? Because they have this misconstrued opinion that you know what? No, no, no. These are these are the Shias to believe in. I discussed this in detail some years ago, so I don't want to get into that. Third thing is that we, the Sunnis and Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaah, need to get one more point clear, and I made this clear last night as well, right? Today, when I say Ali his salam for Fatima, people get a bit scared. When I say Ali alayhi salam sab chong jate hain when I say alayhi salam for Hasan al Hussein sab chong jate hain but Jibril alayhi salam bolna jaiz hai Jibril alayhi salam bolna jaiz hai khud par salam bhejna jaiz hai assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillah wo jaiz hai alayka wa alayhi salam salams upon him wa alayhi salam wo bolna jaiz hai lekin huley husain alayhi salam bolna na jaiz hai ali alayhi salam bolna na jaiz hai log dar jate na radiyallahu anhu bolna alayhi salam nahi bolna what is this this is nasibi aqida wallahi pick up the books of our imam of fiqh of hadith imam bukhari pick up bukhari sharif you'll see the ali alayhi salam fatima alayha salam Imam Imam Bukhari is aqida is this that sab sahaba sar an kofar Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu anhu Umar Farooq radiyallahu anhu Usman Ghani radiyallahu ta'ala anhu lekin Ali alayhi salam Fatima alayhi salam ye aqida Imam Bukhari hamara aqida kya hamara aqida kya and this comes to my third message today We the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaah need to get our priorities right. Bedam yehi to panch hai maqsood kainat. Bedam yehi to panch hai maqsood kainat. Khairun Nisa Hussein wa Hasan Mustafa Ali. This is chosen by Allah and chosen by Rasulullah himself himself first in terms of priority after Allah and Rasulullah. in terms of priority for ahlu sunnah wal jamaah must be the ahlul bayt and the panjatan park finish khalas why am i saying this shauq se ya ghos ka nara lagao shauq se haq farid ya farid kaho shauq se ya khaja gharib nawaz shauq se kaho lekin ek cheez yaad rakhna jab hum ya ghos kehte hain nara ghos ya kehte hain ya ghos wo mohabbat ki wajah se kehte hain 
کہا جب ہم یا غوث کہتے ہیں تو یہ محبت ہے جب ہم بابا فرید حق فرید یا فرید کہتے ہیں تو یہ محبت ہے یا غریب نواز کہتے ہیں تو محبت ہے لیکن جب ہم یا علی کہتے ہیں تو یہ عبادت ہے یا علی کہنا عبادت ہے یا غوث کہنا محبت ہے یا خواجہ کہنا محبت ہے یا غریب نواز یا بابا فرید کہنا محبت ہے یا علی کہنا عبادت ہے Today we should need to put this thing right from now. Narae Takbir, Narae Risalat, Narae Haidari. Uske baad, Narae Ghausiyah, Narae Khaja Gharib Nawaz, Haq Fari. Shok se bolo. Lekin Ali ko mat bholo. Because in all of this, yeh muhabbat ki wajah se hum kehte hai. Lekin huzur ne farmaya. Sarkar ne farmaya. Sadiq al-Wadul Ameen ne farmaya. Zikru Ali yin ibadah. Ali ka zikr karna ibadat hai. To ya Ali kehte raho, sawab milta jayega. This is what we need to prioritize because we are Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. We need to reclaim our nisbah to the Ahlul Bayt from both the Kharijis and Salafis as well as the Shia group and bring it back to Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. In the Masaktum bihi lan tadillu. If you hold on to them, unke daman pakre raho. Walayn yatafarraqa. Because why? Quran and Ahlul Bayt will never be disunited and separated until they are reunited with me on the fountain of Kawsar. Wallah. Look at the hadith of Hakim and Tabrani. Hazrat Ali narrates and concluded with Sanya. Hazrat Ali said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who will be the first people to enter in Jannah? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it. Ana, wa anta, wa Fatima, wa Hussain. Meaning, the first people to enter Jannah will be Rasulullah. Ali, Fatima and Hassan Hussain. Hazrat Ali, loves us so much and he said yeah, so, oh, muhibbuna. what about our lovers what about our ushak what about the ashikar of ahlul bayt huzur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said me where will they be they'll be behind you they'll be behind you not the hadith of tabrani rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated he said when everyone else is making hisab kitab on the day of mahshar نفسي نفسي يوم يفر المرء من أخي وأمه وأبي هزور أنور عليه الصلاة والسلام stated that I Ali Fatima Hassan and Hussein were محبونا and the lovers of أهل البيت will be sitting eating and drinking while everyone else is being judged by Allah سبحانه وتعالى so on the day of Qiyamah, if you want to drink from the fountain of Kawsar, on the day of Qiyamah, if you want to sit on the langar of Ahlul Bayt while everyone else is making Hisab Kitab, and if you want to enter, you know, hurry to enter into paradise, then hold on to one family. And that is Panjatan Park. Prophet said, Man ahabbani wa ahabba hadaini, whosoever loves me and these two. Hussein is in his left and Imam Hassan is holding his finger. Wa abahuma and their father, wa ummahuma and their mother, kana ma'i fi darajati yawm al qiyamah will be with me in my position there of qiyamah. Khuda ki kasam, forgive me if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. Show me one act of ibadah, show me one zikr, show me one salatu tazbih, show me, show me one Quranic recitation, show me any ibadah, hajj upon hajj upon hajj, when Rasulullah gave you a guarantee like this, that if you do this, you will be with me in my position on Qayyama. Wallahi, I tell you, take the ibadah of the whole dunya and put it on one side and put the maqam of Rasulullah on the other side. We still can't compare, but Rasulullah said, love my Ahlul Bayt. Love my Ali, love my Fatima, love my Hassan and Hussein. You will be with me by virtue of your love for them. Allah give us tawfiq and hidayah, inshaAllah ta'ala. Jazakum la khayl zawmalim bala.